To assemble the frame, you're gonna place the top plate, press nuts face down, arrange the arms, securing them with a 20 millimeter bolt through the center of the spacer, two 30 millimeter bolts through either side, and then attach the side rails with a 12 millimeter bolt. So the first step is gonna have your frame looking exactly like this. We have the arms with the press nuts face up and faced in to attach the side rails to with a 12 millimeter bolt. The 20 millimeter bolt going down the center and then these are temporary bolts just to make sure that everything lines up while you really tighten down this center bolt all the way. Now you can actually go ahead and remove these 30 millimeter bolts before the next step. So next step is to install the arm braces. We're gonna have the front brace with a press nut and then the rear brace. These are going to attach to the frame with 12 millimeter bolts going through to 15 millimeter standoffs. And then the front brace is also gonna have a flat head 12 millimeter bolt. That will have the frame looking like this. As you can see, the 15 millimeter standoffs here. And then I lied, these are actually 10 millimeter bolts, but 12 will work also. And you can see they fit snugly into the depth cut in the arm and there's 14 millimeter bolts included in the kit to mount the motors to. Next, we'll install the remaining standoffs. Center here with 20 millimeter standoffs and eight millimeter bolts, and then we'll add the TPU. Starting at the front, we have the camera mounts. They'll take the O3, the O4, and the Vista units. On top of that, crossfire mounting. Next up, the side skirts. There's a cutout you want to gonna keep up front to slide on an RX bridge if you need to use it. Then depending on how your XT90 is gonna be routed, you can have a rear cover as well. And then finally, we have LED mounts for tiny LEDs. These I would secure with double-sided tape. You can either leave them naked, it adds a nice taper from the spacer down to the arm, or tiny LEDs, success LEDs will fit nicely in here. With that done, you can install the stack screws. They're gonna be 20 millimeters coming through the center here secured with a metal nut on the inside, and then we'll close up the top plate. So for the top plate, you can either go 30 millimeters through both of the arms, if you're just gonna use a GoPro. If you wanna mount the black magic, the naked black magic, or if you're gonna use the DAC clean plate, then 40 millimeters on the very outside of the arm, 30 millimeters on the inside of the arm, and then eight millimeters everywhere else. When it comes to antenna mounting and some of the electronic peripherals, we have the side rails, which can be used for SMA. These can be positioned anywhere up or down. GPS and an XT60 tap for the BEC. These are gonna be either 10 or 12 millimeter bolts, depending on the thickness of the carbon. There's also an antenna mount 3D print, which can be assembled using a standoff. This will mount to the side rail and provide an adjustable crossfire for either horizontal storage or vertical performance. It's probably mostly gonna be used uh, with a bottom mount battery, but it's there in case you need it. To secure your battery, there's the strap plate. This can either be attached to the top or the bottom, depending on the setup of choice. And it simply allows you to run a strap around it and firmly attach the battery without worrying about going through cutouts and getting in the way of electronics and all that kind of stuff. And it's super easy to just remove and change battery straps should one break. This will either plant right up top if you remove these six bolts and the exact same 
on the bottom. You may want to run longer bolts here. We're using flathead 12 millimeters with a nylon nut. Just loosely fastened so you can easily unscrew it to the frame itself. Uh, but you might want to use 16 millimeters at the end. In conjunction with the strap plate or independently, this can be moved up and down the frame to attach an XT90 to. You can add the standoffs if you want. You don't need them, but it adds a little extra clearance for the pigtail. And it can be mounted at the rear, acting as a spacer in place of the nylon nuts, like so. Or you can have it running underneath and then face down for a bottom mount battery. So for camera mounting, you're either going to be attaching a Naked Black Magic directly to these extruding bolts here, or you can use those same bolts and provided TPU or carbon spaces to mount a DAC plate. This plate has spacing for the DAC mount, which has become the industry standard. Um, and this is a Hyperlow mount that will be available soon. There's a number on the web at this point, so whatever you want to use, you can pick up this plate and attach it to it. There is a couple of options for GoPro mounting. There's a standard mount and also the extended mount. To assemble this, you're going to take the standoffs and slide them through both of the TPU prints. Once that's done, you're going to want to attach these side plates using the flathead bolts included to both sides of this adjustable mount. After that, you can slide on the base and attach it again with the same bolts. And then finally slide on this cover plate before bolting it directly to the front of the frame. So with this installed, you can run then nine inch props. Then you can run up to a 5,200 milliamp size battery. And also with the new O4 unit, if you're doing some long range or anything like that, you can rehouse the camera into the actual top here and then get props free view. Just like that. Before we look at the inside, I just got to give a quick plug to this skill screwdriver that I've been using. Uh, makes frames like this remarkably easy and quick to get in and out of. So I recommend picking something like this up. I'll have a link in the bottom. So for electronics installation, you can have the air unit up front, 20 by 20 M2. Then there's an RX bridge right here, 30 by 30 mounting for the flight controller stack. I like the Hobby Wing 65 amp. There's enough room for the capacitor to run out here without needing to unsolder anything. And then the Radix 2 HD makes a nice FC on top. And then finally at the rear, there's space for a BEC. I like the Matek 12S, fits nice and snug here. And then you can use that to power the XT60 tap, which will attach to the rail and the LEDs. And then a quick note for the antennas, SMA to UFL, you're gonna to wanna to use five to six inches. I think six inches is the easiest to find. Right angle is a little cleaner, but that length allows you to move these up and down the rail. And here's what that looks like assembled. O3 unit up front, receiver tucked away down there stack with the hobby wing and the radix and then the matek bc at the end i have gps right angle smas and then the st xt60 sma tap 